I come from Johannesburg. And a number of years ago, there was a song called Give Me Hope, Joanna. And it was about Johannesburg. And it was about apartheid and how people were holding on and craving for hope. I'm in no way a supporter of the apartheid government, but I've got to tell you that in 1995, when a new government came in, we thought there was hope coming. But today we found that that wasn't a real hope. People are actually poorer. It's a devastating thing to see central Johannesburg. It's a devastating to see, a, see the corruptness of a country. Some people might say I'm wrong on that, but as Christians, we want a real hope. Not a hope that promises and doesn't come through. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 13. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in this present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, the hope for Paul is not salvation. We've already got that. The hope is when God fully manifests himself in this world at the second coming. Salvation is just a foretaste of that. And all Christians share that in common. We are hoping and waiting for that blessed hope, the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ. That hope invites us to live with a true promise of what God is going to do. That hope invites us to unite with other Christians in sharing the gospel and inviting other people into that hope. That hope allows us to put up with things when things are going wrong in the world because we know this isn't the end. This is just part of the story. But one day, when Jesus is fully revealed, evil will be defeated in the world and in us, and we will have the victory in Christ. And so as we continue with Titus, Paul is helping unify the church behind that hope of the promise of the second coming of God. God bless and have a great day.